In this video, I'm reviewing the Ninja Foodi 18 one Digital Air Fry Flip Oven. So let's get started. The Ninja Foodi Air Fry Oven comes with a nice large size air fry basket that can hold up to six chicken breast pieces, a wire rack that can hold up to nine slices of bread, and a crumb tray. Inside the box you'll also find the instructions manual and also a 15 recipe booklet. Unfortunately mine seemed to be missing the recipe booklet which was a little disappointing but that's okay since uh, I always have the internet or I can just download it from the Ninja website. Oh and there's also the 13 inch by 13 inch sheet pan for baking and roasting and you'll just place it on top of the wire rack when cooking in it. The Ninja Foodi oven measures at 15 inches wide, 7.6 inches tall and 19.7 inches in depth. It's very easy to use with only one dial to turn and push. This model has eight cooking functions, air fry, air roast, air broil, bake, dehydrate, keep warm, toast and bagel. It has a timer and a slice button a temperature and darkness level button, a light button, and also a power on and off button. Let's take a look inside and it has three heating elements at the top and at the bottom which I think is great as that means that the heat will definitely spread out evenly from the front, middle and the back. So I've washed all the trays and given the oven a good wipe and the manual says before using it for the first time to place all the trays inside the oven. You can make them all fit by turning the air fry basket upside down. Once all the trays are inside the oven, then turn the oven on to the air fry function for 20 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And this will get rid of the residue and also some of that uh, smell that you get from using it for the first time. You can fit up to nine slices of bread on the wire rack. But I'm going to try toasting three slices and I want to see how well it's going to toast when I place them at different sections of the oven. So I'm going to put one at the front, one in the middle and one towards the back. You know sometimes you would find that uh, the back part of the oven may be hotter than the front side. I don't know if that's just me or if anyone else ever felt that with their ovens. Maybe you can drop us a comment below and let us know if you've noticed it in any of your ovens. And I have to admit that I'm glad that the guys over at Ninja Kitchen figured out that toast will cook evenly on both sides by placing the wire rack at the lower level. I used to do this with my previous ovens as I'd always find that when it was on the upper or the middle level they wouldn't toast on the underside as evenly uh, as the top side did. These toasted very well and evenly on both the top and the underside. It didn't matter which part of the oven they were placed in because they all turned out the same. Setting the air fryer for 20 minutes at 395 degrees Fahrenheit, I air fried some frozen chicken fingers and some french fries. The air fryer doesn't have a flip or shake sign so you have to remember to turn the food halfway through cooking. If you guys are new to my channel do consider subscribing so I can bring you more home and kitchen product reviews. And also don't forget to give this video a like if you are finding it useful. So the air fry function is great but it's not brilliant I must be honest. Perhaps because I've used a standalone air fryer and I've also have the air fryer function in my 5-in-1 grill and uh, the food cooks much better in those than it does in an air fry oven. In the Ninja oven I did find that the food took longer to cook and it was also a lot drier no matter how much oil I sprayed on there. You 
You can fit a 12 inch pizza pan up to a 13 inch actually into this oven and since I make homemade pizzas on a daily basis I really needed an oven big enough to fit at least a 12 inch pizza. The oven takes about one minute to preheat which is very fast and my pizza was ready in just under 15 minutes and it came out perfectly cooked including the base of the pizza. Sometimes I would find that the cheese would get cooked and start burning before the base has cooked from underneath but luckily, thankfully, um, the oven cooked the, the base of the pizza perfectly. If I just show you underneath here, um, it's come out really nice. When the oven is turned off, the little hot icon will stay on just to remind you not to flip it just yet. And once the oven has cooled down, you'll see flip on the display letting you know that it can now be flipped away. Okay, let's talk very quickly about cleaning the oven since I've used it for a few days now. Um, I'm going to remove the crumb tray and uh, give that a good wash. Better remember to unplug the unit before I start cleaning it. I'm also going to wipe down the wire rack. and. I'm so glad that this oven doesn't have a gap between the door. Usually um, the ovens that I've had before, there's always a gap in there. If you wanna watch my video about the Black & Decker, you can see how hard it was for me to sometimes get rid of the crumbs from there. But um, I usually just take this brush and just brush out the crumbs from there. Once you've flipped up the oven, you can also open up the back side to get access to the underside of the oven and just uh, use a brush to brush out any crumbs that are in there and uh, give the oven a good wipe. The heating elements uh, are going to need a little bit more work, especially if you've um, used uh, any cooking that leaves any oil in there. So you can see I have a few stains on the heating element cover. Um, it's not actually on the bar. So I'm just going to take a SOS pad or a Brillo pad or whatever you call it on your side and I'm just going to scrape off the uh, grease from there because there's, there's nothing else that I can use to remove the uh, grease from this. I wouldn't use the SOS pad on any of the trays or even on the heating elements because that's just going to scratch it and you don't want to ruin the coating on them. Once you're all done with that, you can um, close it up and give it all a good wipe underneath and as you're tilting it you'll see just underneath here as well I can see a few crumbs under there so I'm just gonna wipe out the crumbs from there as well use the brush to get out any crumbs that are trapped in there so overall like it's a great oven and because of its low height it doesn't feel too daunting in the kitchen either definitely cooks faster which i think is down to the oven having six heating elements and also the height of the oven so the heat has a smaller area to circulate in i have to say that the ninja foodie guys did do well on the design of this air fry toaster oven my only other observation is the handle that's on the left side so I'm right-handed and obviously putting food in and taking food out, I'm going to use my right hand. So the handle being on the left side works well for me. But if you are left-handed, I'm curious to know if having the handle on the left side makes it a little awkward because then you'd have to stretch your right arm over to open the handle. So having it in the center would have been better for both users. Anyway, it's probably not a big deal, but again, you know, it's the little things that make a difference. So if you are left-handed, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments because I am really curious to know um, if that would bug you because I'm pretty sure it would bug me. And talking about the small things, we really like this stopper that's been placed inside the oven here. It, uh, it's built in for both safety and convenience. Usually in ovens when you take out the food the whole rack would come out or if you tilt it the food would slide off. But this little stopper here prevents the rack from sliding out too far um, even causing the food to sometimes slide off especially when the food is hot. So um, like I say it, it does, it's the little things that matter. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and I hope to catch you in my next video.